Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is how do you reestablish trust, confidence, belief, and faith in not only yourself, your environment, but really at the world at large? How do you get that confidence back? after you've been in a relationship with someone who has perhaps betrayed you, deceived you, hurt your feelings, made you insecure through the audacity of their ability to violate boundaries, to lie behind your back, to uh, mix up and gaslight your understanding of things so that you can't really see things clearly. This is an erosion or a corruption of really the heart of others that takes place, I would say, as a result of an abusive or manipulative relationship that is at the hands of someone who might be narcissistic, malignant, narcissistic, psychopathic. You know, their threat is in the confidence of others. They're oftentimes threatened by this. So you might have been coached, programmed to have lack of confidence in yourself. You might have been programmed to not trust yourself. You might have been treated with constant criticism and lies. So that whole mechanism really begins to break apart. It breaks off that self-confidence. And instead, they will infuse or fill others with self-doubt, recrimination, false accusations, gaslighting, and brainwashing, which alters really a sense of perception in your reality of what is true, what you can count on and be reliable. That is confidence. You know, a lot of people lose their confidence, their self-esteem, their trust, which, you know, it's usually an automatic process. Just like, yeah, I trust that my lungs are going to breathe. I trust that my heart is going to beat. I trust, you know, that the wind is going to blow somewhere today. I mean, these are all givens that you <clears throat> can rely on. So that element of sort of confidence, looking ahead to the future and not worried, or looking to the past and not feeling um, trauma, traumatized suffering, hurt feelings, is really you know an important restoration that you need to rebuild and experience, re-experience in your life. Trust is really the seat of confidence, meaning you know, I, I can be confident that this car will drive. I'm confident that this chair will hold me up. You know, and <clears throat> this confidence, meaning you don't have to question it. You don't have to doubt it. When you're in a relationship with a narcissist or someone who is a malignant manipulator, they will violate that confidence. They will violate that trust. They will violate that reliability and instead put uncertainty, fear, trepidation in its place. This is programming. This is nothing more than a learned lack of confidence. It is learned helplessness. It is learned hopelessness. These are all situations that really result as a, an experience with someone who is uh, highly manipulative, taking advantage of you, um, not giving you the full story, withholding open and honest communication, and instead betraying you, throwing you under the bus, Whatever the statement is, where they're trying to basically assign any sort of confidence is, is not to be had. There is a lack of certainty. There's a lack of reliability. When someone has violated or broken that bond, then a lack of trust will ensue, which really creates a lack of confidence and a lack of faith. So... And in, once again, in its place is then usually programmed to have a very self-limiting belief and to be filled with doubt, to be filled with fear, trepidation, you know, unsureness of yourself, unsure that you know what you know, unsure that you can do something successfully, unsure of what you need, um, you know, unsure of what to eat, unsure of what to do, what to read, where to go. This is because they really seek to shred up and tear down that confidence because if you own that oftentimes then you know you then have the ability to see clearly and could call them out and perhaps leave the relationship but of course the narcissist and the psychopath who needs others 
they require a victim. They need an outlet to push around on a daily basis for them to have confidence. So don't, you know, sacrifice your serenity, your confidence in yourself to somebody else. Don't give it up to them. This is known as taking back your power, taking back your I am, taking back your power, your confidence, your trust in self. I trust, I trust, I trust in this chair. You know, what things can you begin to trust on with a degree of certainty? And you have to be able to experience this state within, even though it's a direct conflict to a relationship with a narcissist, because that state, that B state, is what the narcissist or the psychopath, the manipulator, wants you to avoid and not live, breathe, eat, sleep in at all costs. So it's kind of like you're, it's taking one for the team, but staying down for the team that no longer exists anymore. You know, I took one for the team. I, you know, I was the fall guy. I, you know, went out and I did this. And then usually, you know, everybody is clapping when you're back. Okay, you took that one for the team. Now we're better and stronger for it. Unfortunately, with a relationship with a manipulator, you're not better for it. You're not stronger for taking one for the team. They will, you know, set you weak and then weak into the wilderness so that you cannot defend yourself. You don't have you know, that, that sort of trust, that security, and that sense of reliability and certainty in yourself. So that really needs to be established, re-established, and understand that oftentimes it's very difficult to attain that state because that is the very state that has the, the narcissist, the manipulator, does not want you to exist in. They will, you know, cause you that to be corrupted. Um, and they might even, you know, a, a someone who is psychopathic might, you know, even say, I, I corrupted you or I corrupted this and that. I mean, so, but that's what they think. You are above that. You have emotions. You have the ability to own your own feelings. They do not own your feelings for you. They do not own your energy in motion. They do not violate your sense of trust in, unless you give them permission. If you have had your boundaries violated, then you must know that you are responsible for keeping those intact and with you on the daily, on, you know, at, you know, really understanding where your boundaries are and getting a feel and exercising them. Boundaries meaning what, if you do this, then, you know, to protect myself, there's this, and you don't get involved in a whole seat of, um, of coping strategies, but having that without needing to cope, I am. Um, and the, the things that then will trigger or set people off will try to launch you back into that corrupted state, that um, devalued state, you know, um, lack of confidence. When you feel yourself entering into that zone, you know, that has been sort of programmed into you, say, I know better. I have faith. I know better. I have faith that this is right. I have faith. I have confidence. I have security. Oftentimes this is very difficult to ignite within because it's a direct conflict to the state that you have been programmed to live in by a narcissist, a manipulator, someone who is a deceiver, someone who is on really sort of a whole nother level really, they, they take their deception, you know, to another level that you don't really want to enter into. So it's okay to deny the, the programming within yourself. I deny the programming. It's not work. It's not running anymore. That lack of trust in myself, that tr that track is no longer running anymore. I, I validate myself from within. So that self-validating mechanism, that self-soothing, self-calming mechanism has to be strong. You have to give yourself permission. You have permission to be calm and to be okay and to be confident in this state at this time. Now, all of now, you have permission. So you have to give yourself permission to be strong. It has to be a mechanism that is established within. 
otherwise known as an intrapersonal relationship. So trust has to be reignited within. I am certain. I have no doubt. And write these things down. And so and you need to give yourself repetition and experience with confidence. And when self-doubt creeps in, be able to identify, oh yeah, that is the programming of the manipulator. That is not my true energy. That is not my true essence. You have to be able to sort of realize what is your programming and what is your truth. <clears throat> and it's okay to remove the old programming. A lot of people have a fear to do this because they don't know what to go to next. What you can go to next is your faith and your strength and your confidence in within. Confidence is within. Trust and reliability is within. I give that to myself. So you, at this point of the restoration, even though a lot of people will think that their confidence is validated by another. In other words, they want to hear some sort of validation from within. They, they are, are used to having their trust sourced or their lack of trust sourced from outside of themselves. Um, you know, they, because outside of them, some external force, individual, community, uh, uh, organizational system, institution, what have you, made you experience a lack of confidence because of a certain lack of information. So you did, you were, you know, entering into that situation in a weakened state. And then that perpetuated and was reinforced and rememorized again and again and again, which comes back down to the seed of the identity and the I am. So they will, you know, those manipulative relationships, they w will really, um, toy with your emotions, your feelings, especially that of your strength and confidence. They will set you up weak until you come from a position of weakness time and time again. That becomes almost like a new normal. So, you know, be able to reject that fear is not a, a space that you want to live in and to say and create a new normal. I am confident. I am confident. I have trust and faith within. And meaning, faith is something that you have within and carry within, even though you cannot see it. So faith is one of those things that you have to just, you know, live on a prayer for a moment. You have to be able to live on a prayer. What was that, the Bon Jovi song? We're halfway there. Whoa, whoa, we're living on a prayer. So having that prayer alive and like lighting up your heart. You have to be able to live on that prayer. Live on it. Live on it. Be confident in it. Do you see what, I'm, you know, I trust that this is going to come through. I trust that this will work out. I trust. I believe. I know. I am operating from a state of confidence and conviction. And be able to build that up within yourself, little by little. Give yourself a reason to trust yourself. I handled this well. I was very strong here. Getting an image then of yourself operating in strength. What does that look like? Not false strength, but real strength. I am really strong. I am truly strong. I am truly confident. I'm no lo longer caught up in the delusion of the lie. I'm no longer caught up in the delusion of the deception. I no longer have to believe the pathological lies anymore. It's okay for me to think differently. It is okay to, for me to think independently. It's okay for me to be an independent thinker. And so it is. And I trust in this. And when things, you know, try to come at me and throw me off, you can back up and identify it as such. So you literally, like a dream catcher, you know, like the Native American dream catcher, you literally have to catch, you know, before the fall. You literally have to say, oh, this is where I second guess myself because of the deception and the betrayal that I have experienced. And, you know, where I was unable to think clearly. See, fear will cause you, um, it's a very difficult thing 
if you've experienced a lot of fear in your life, then it's very difficult to erect boundaries and, and rely on them and be like, you know, able to knock on them. Yup, that boundary's strong. You know, knock on that one, that's strong. Knock on that, that is strong. You have to be able to knock on your own boundaries, your own self, <clears throat> and say, even though I didn't expect that this is where I would be right now, this is where it is, and I have gratitude for where I am. <clears throat> I am grateful for having discovered that I am an independent thinker. I am grateful. I have gratitude that I have free will. I have gratitude that I no longer have to live under the guise of suffering from a manipulator who is trying to take from me rather than support truth and trust within. That relationship is so very important for you to develop within first. So you, it's like lighting a, a, a match, lighting a, a divine spark. I mean, something, it's a real important switch that you sort of ignite within and say, no matter what, I trust. No matter what, I work out today. No matter what, I eat healthy today. No matter what, I read today. No matter what, I am productive today. No matter what. And then you will begin to develop self-trust no matter what. And so you have to develop that internal climate, that internal environment. What does it feel like in there? Is it cozy? Is it comfortable? Is it balanced? Is it neutral? Or is it inflamed, exasperated, hyperventilating, or fearful and anxious? Realize that the anxiety has been set into motion oftentimes by a violation of boundaries where it's like, you know, the, the wolf got into the chicken coop and we got to rebuild here. We got to put up a better boundary so that, you know, no matter even if, if you're faced with deception, someone who's trying to falsely accuse you, you don't launch into a reaction. You watch it as if you're just watching a movie and they're on a, you know, that when they're sort of at you with um, the false accusations that you, you don't give it any credibility. You don't give it any weight. You don't give it any truth. You don't give it any substance. It is insubstantial. Um, you, you have to realize how important that you must really cling to your truth. I am clinging to my truth. I am clinging. I am holding on to my internal confidence. I am clinging to my confidence right now. I am embracing my confidence. I have myself. And this is all that is important right now. I have my confidence. I have my security. I have my serenity. And I'm able to see things clearly and think clearly now. And so reinforcing that, rememorizing it, that is an important I am, an affirmation that you have to experience. And you can experience that through cultivating a trust state within yourself in writing out, I trust myself today in your um, appointment book. I trust myself today. Write it out. You guys need to get active on this. It's so important that you follow through. And I, you know, I very much um, recommend getting an appointment book. What are your commands to yourself today? I trust myself today. I trust myself this hour. I trust that I can take care of myself. I trust that I know what is in my best interest. I know. And then also having conversations with people that can, um, that you can trust, that you can sort of check out your thinking with is so crucial. In other words, am I on the right track? You, you know, to have, but have it within and then share and validate with others is a good sort of intermediary step point. <clears throat> if you have been, you know, surrounded by people who have taken a lot of your, your trust and your certainty away and have replaced it with fear, anxiety, false accusation, you know, no wonder you are lacking confidence. No longer you are feeling weak. No wonder you are lacking trust in, in people because you have, you have been violated. That is a, a true violation energy when you've been in a relationship. Um, it's, you know, it's, a real true feeling of, of being violated and it's almost um, it's uh, it's on the level of shock but it's more it gets to a very another level of really appalling um, and so you know you have to sort of be able to get a tailspin 
out of that, I am appalled. You know, you might need to get to that very rock bottom. I am so appalled that I have been lied to. I am so appalled that I've been cheated on. I am so appalled that I've been thrown under the bus. I'm so appalled that someone is trying to destroy this. This is appalling. You know, and so make that statement and then realize where the violation lives and don't live where the violation lives. Refuse. I refuse to live in violation. I refuse. I refuse. And you have to be, you have to have that level of commitment. It has to be a hundred percent. And if you're not quite there yet, I am a hundred percent. I am a hundred percent. You know, and then when you find yourself sort of, you know, coming down from that and then second guessing yourself or being triggered, I am confident. I rely on myself here. I am confident. I rely on my strength here. I am calm in the midst of this. I am calm in the midst of this. I am calm and with gratitude in the midst of this. Gratitude is one of the most powerful emotions I feel that can lead to self-trust. Gratitude for every little thing. I have gratitude that I am safe. I have gratitude that I have shelter. I have gratitude that I have food. I have gratitude that I have clean water. I have gratitude that I have two feet and two hands. I have gratitude right now. And allow gratitude to fill you up and, and appreciate what you have and come from that positive, substantial viewpoint and perspective, not the devalued, uh, falsely accused, beaten down self. That has to sort of, sort of you know, be detached from that that you know that's that's the self that they're trying to coax you into being you know don't buy that don't fall for that um command into weakness command every time that they do that command yourself into strength i command myself into strength now i command myself into strength now i am strong and i am sure of this i am strong and i am sure of this if you are constantly like looking over your back or worried, then you are still being controlled by a narcissist. If someone can control you, whoever makes you afraid, fearful, intimidated, has the power switch. Take the power switch back. That is my power switch, okay? You are the captain of your own ship in this case. In your own, you know, and so don't, don't allow them to get into your head. Don't allow them to get into your heart. This is yours. If you're used to being violated, you're used to sort of someone sort of taking, you know, possession, not possession, but being like, you owe me or, you know, you are mine. <laughs> you are my possession. You know, the, I, I have power or control over you. And that is not the case. You have power and control over you. This is the news. This is the news flash. This is really the reality to wake up to and be grat and have gratitude for that and then keep it small and then little by little grow and grow and grow. The little baby steps, the affirmations, the astromations, allowing it you know uh, physically means practicing. Kines it's a kinesthetic reality. I am strong. I am strong. So it's understanding what triggers you and realize that that is coming from the betrayal and then say, no, that's just leftover mass. That's a leftover feeling that I no longer identify with. And then really sort of become a new body mind connection to the present moment. With all that I have learned in the present moment, I am strong. With all that I have gone through in the present moment, I have confidence. I trust and if you have trouble with that, then you, you know, speaking with somebody um, and, and checking that out is a way to solidify it and make like a strong link is a good way to reestablish that. You have to have trust, confidence within. Even if you can't see it, you have to know it. You have to feel it. You have to be able to, you know, you, it, you might feel that it's like a diamond in the rough, but you are that diamond. You are that light. You are that ignited positive spark that is your your passion <clears throat> so a lot of people have really learned to not trust their passion 
um, which is really the seat and fire of your soul. So ignite the fire of your joy. You know, it's okay to be okay. It's okay to be well. It's okay to be safe. It's okay to get distance from those who have violated you and to erect very strong boundaries and that you can enforce them. You can be there. You're like the, the security guard. Someone's trying to violate it. Uh, no, sir. You got, you got to go back. This, there's no in here. You know, you got to go back, ma'am. There is no way around this. And you have to make your boundaries 24 miles high and, you know, 3,000 miles long. How, how strong are you making your boundaries? How much conviction do you have that you are worth protecting? That you have to circle back to. Really, really understand what your boundaries are and how deep have you made them? How long have you made them? How high have you made them? Your boundaries should be able to be rooted. I mean, set the roots three miles down into the earth. Set it that strong. Set your boundaries that can span for thousands of miles. Your, your boundary only goes 50 feet. Well, let's extend it. You need to have it 3,000. 3,000 miles is your boundary. You have to understand that your boundaries extend in time. Your boundaries extend in time moving forward. Your boundaries expand, you know, are, um, are all around you, even in the past and in the present. But are they big enough? Are they strong enough? Is your boundary one inch by one inch? You know, your boundaries to protect yourself have to really be deep, have to really be high and really be wide. 24 miles into the sky, is that a strong enough boundary for you? Okay, perfect. Then know what your strongest boundaries are. How tall are they? How long are they? How deep are they? You know, what, what are they made of? Do you knock on it and you, can you hear an echo? Can you punch against it and it doesn't fall over? You have to really work on that strength and give yourself, oh, but I don't know if I deserve to have such a strong boundary. I don't know if, yes, you do. You deserve it. You are worth it. You are, I am. You are trustworthy. You are wonderful. You are magnificent. Your passion is magnificent. Follow and live in that passion and allow that passion to you know, slowly develop into enthusiasm and gratitude and really tap into more of those positive emotional states on the daily. And then test yourself. The betrayal tries to come around. No, thank you. You know, no, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. Have trust and confidence in yourself today and embrace. Embrace this. You've got this. You have permission to be strong and you are no longer set up for failure. You are set up for success. Even though someone might have betrayed you and set you up for failure and took advantage of that, um, they, they violated your, your, your faith of the future. They violated your hope in the future through setting up a, a very craggy, bad, weak foundation. You must shore it up. Shore it up with your self-valuing yourself. Even if they have devalued you, do not conform to that devalued measure. They don't de define who you are. You define who you are. It's so important that you really grasp this. It's, it's, a, it's a long journey, and we'll talk more about that. But give gratitude and reliability to yourself. And no matter what happens, things are going to come up that, you, that might test this. Okay, when things come up that test this, this is what I'm going to feel like. This is what I'm going to look like. It's almost like a forecast. What are you going to look like? What are you going to feel like? Are you going to be strong, smiling, filled with strength, filled with resolution, and just being overall neutral? Neutral? Just being neutral is a, a place of strength. So not going, you know, the extreme down, not going the extreme up, just neutral. I am neutral. I am neutral, I am indifferent. And learn to practice these states of neutrality, indifference, trust, and faith. These are all the intangibles that you need to work on and sort of identify these new states and develop them within yourself, which is really ignited by free will. 
you are energized by free will, which means if you want, just right now while you're listening to this video, you can walk 12 steps that way and 12 steps this way. This is a testimony to your free will. So exercise that now, especially when it comes to developing trust, protecting and living in strength that you deserve. And secure. I am secure. And so it is. It is okay. This is your buddy. Peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and for goodness sake, please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Trust within, trust without, and trust around you. Have a beautiful day.